I am, so that's where I tweet. Uh, a little over uh, two years ago, I started um, an internet marketing consultancy. So we focus on helping companies with search engine optimization, pay-per-click advertising, and social media strategies. Um, this is John Carmen of Avenue Design Studios, and we work together because I don't do a lot of web design, and he doesn't do a lot of SEO, so we kind of team up sometimes on some projects. And uh, so he's going to be here helping me with this presentation. And translating for anyone who needs. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you. Daniel? <laughs> no, I'll this. together because I think more and more people are getting into WordPress and starting to use WordPress not just to manage their blog but to also manage their website and use it as a content management system. Um, and it has a lot of features, really great features, some built-in SEO features as well that you know help save people a lot of time using the plugins and the different widgets and everything. Even some web design firms are just starting to manage their clients' websites using or create them and have them powered by WordPress. Um, so I just thought it would be very you know, beneficial. Also, um, there's a lot of different plugins out there and it's hard to know which ones are helpful and which ones can you know, help save you some time and which ones can you know, cause your website to crash. So, um, and, and as for the SEO aspect, I think that it's a component that's often overlooked by people developing websites, even though um, you know it's kind of pointless to have a website if nobody can find it. So we'll talk about some reasons why you should be incorporating SEO into your website as well. Um, so this session is mostly for people who are using WordPress as a content management system, either for your blog or for your website, and using WordPress.org. If you are using, is anybody in here using WordPress.com right now? Okay, nobody. Um, yeah, for your blog. Okay, so um, hopefully I can convince those people for you why you should be uh, moved over to WordPress.org. How many people are have a website, or they manage a website or a blog that's powered by WordPress.org right now? So everybody, anybody, anybody not? Okay, <laughs> you're using Google. <laughs> we know that. Okay. And, um, okay, so I, I guess, how many of you are, are kind of confused or maybe don't know a lot about what WordPress.org is or just kind of interested in it? So a few of you. Okay, good. So, uh, so what WordPress.org is, is a content management system. It's similar to Joomla <coughs> or Drupal, which David um, is proficient in. Uh, except I think there's, it makes things a lot more simple. So if you have a very simple type of website or a blog, it, 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 it's, um, I think it's often better to use WordPress instead of Joomla or Drupal, especially if you're new to all of this. Um, they, can, they can all do blogging, but WordPress was specifically built for blogging, and then you have to add on to it to create other things. And Drupal was built as a much more robust system for larger websites, and then you have to make it work for blogging. So. Out of the box, WordPress is easier unless you have a large scale organization. Yeah, if you're doing a lot of e commerce on your website, it might not be the best um, website for you to use. Um, and it makes it very easy for you to be able to install plugins. One thing about WordPress.org is that you have to be able to host your own website. You have to own your own domain and host your own website. And by host your own website, I mean sign up with a service like GoDaddy or pair networks and they you know, manage um, the hosting of your website. Instead of using WordPress.com, which is you're using their domain and their hosting. Uh, so this is actually John's website and he uses WordPress as a content management system. So this is the homepage of his site and I think these slides are a little dark. Well, we don't have the uh, Okay, thanks. Um, they were off. Anyway, so this is his website, this is the homepage, and so you can see you can do a lot of different creative, very creative things with WordPress. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a very um, cookie cutter type of thing. And you don't have to, it doesn't have to have the blog up here on the homepage. It can, you can incorporate it in other ways. You 
can have a blog on your website, but it doesn't have to be the home page. Uh, another example, this is a website that I just, a uh, blog that I just put up, and it's glutenfreedietblog.com. So, I have it set up so that the, this is just the theme. A lot of it depends on the type of theme that you use and whether you've developed that theme to be able to, you know, set it as your home page or something else. So this is just the theme that I happen to use, and it places little snippets of each of the blogs on the home page, so you can have it set up that way. Likewise, you can also have it set up so that, you know, the blog appears on the home page of the site as well. And then another example, New York Times is powered by WordPress. Now they have many developers using all kinds of different, you know, things. So you can see that it's, you know, you can take a very basic blog and have that put up powered by WordPress or, you know, something very complex. The PodCamp Pittsburgh website is also powered by WordPress. And as for, um, so we'll just kind of take a step back and, and just talk about why you want to, have your website optimized. Um, does anybody use SEO right now or any SEO plugins? Dana does. Thomas does. You do a little bit? Okay, cool. Well, um, so just before I talk about some of the plugins, I want to talk a little bit about why you should be using search engine optimization, how you can incorporate that into your website. So this is just kind of a formal definition. Search engine optimization is the process of improving the volume and the quality of traffic to a website from search engines via natural, organic search results. Now, a less formal definition, this is one that I just wrote, um, it, it's, what it is is ensuring that specific elements are set in place, either on your website or off of your website, so that search engines can read your website, so that their crawlers can see what your website's talking about, and therefore know which keywords to rank your <coughs> website for, in the search engine results pages or the SERPs. So, what are these different? What are these specific elements um, that you're supposed to be using? Well, a lot of these things are, you know, putting keywords in the right places. This is, on, you know, on your website, and then also just making sure that there's some technical things that are done so that they can be able to read your website well. And then there's some off-site things that you can do, such as link building, having other li websites link back to your website is also involved in SEO. Now, so you can think of, you know, search engine optimization. These search engines, they're reading your website, and their readers or customers or clients and their members, they're, it's, it's the go-between, between your website and the people who are finding your website. Because they're not going to find your website if they're in there, you know, searching in Google or Bing, Unless Google, Yahoo, and Bing can read your website. So you can think of SEO as like pulling in people who are already searching for what you're offering. And um, I think the, lo the kind of slogan that I use is the best customer is already searching for your product or service. Well, why are they the best customer? Because they're already, they're already looking. They're, they're in the process of buying something. So... You know, why not attract those people? Um, so the, the things that I said, you're going to be thinking about your keywords, your links, and effective web design. And we're mostly going to talk about keyword, the plugins for using keywords and some effective web design today and some of the technical things. Um, so keywords. Why use keywords? Um, well, it's pretty simple. I mean, it tells the search engines what your website is about and it allows people to be able to find you. Now, where do the keywords go on your website? How many of you have done a keyword analysis for your, for your blog or your business? Okay, not very many, okay. <laughs> so, there's a few really good tools for doing keyword analysis, and I, I didn't make a slide about it, but I think it's important enough to, to talk about is that um, you can do searches in Google. Google has a keyword search tool. And so, you know, maybe if you are an attorney in Pittsburgh, and you're a tax attorney in Pittsburgh, and, you know, you want to rank for, for those words, tax attorney, Pittsburgh, um, you can think of that as like a keyword phrase. So I guess whenever I say keywords, I'm saying something different whenever I 
I say keyword phrase. So tax is a keyword, but tax attorney Pittsburgh is the keyword phrase. So I kind of lump that together when I'm talking about that. So anyway, if you are a tax attorney in Pittsburgh and you want your website to come up to that, you're going to be thinking of different ways that somebody might search in tax attorney Pittsburgh. That's not the only keyword that somebody might use. They might also use lawyer. They might spell attorney wrong. They might be looking for tax legal advice. You know, there's all kinds of different <coughs> keywords. So unless you're actually thinking about all the different keywords that somebody could use to come to your website, then you haven't really thoroughly done your keyword analysis and, and none of this is going to actually matter. Now, once you've done your analysis, where are you going to put your keywords? You're going to put them in your title tags. And your title tags should be different for every page of your website. Does everyone know HTML enough to know what title tags? No one or everyone? <laughs> okay. Um, and then there's also the anchor text. The anchor text is the hyperlinks. The, the, you have your keyword phrase and it hyperlinks from one page to the next. And then there's the headings, so you have your H1, your H2 tags, and you can throw those in your style sheets and, you know, it makes it very easy to use, especially if you're using WordPress, that heading already comes up sometimes depending on your theme. And then you also want to put your keywords into your content. You don't want to keyword stuff and, you know, all your content be keywords. You're also writing for humans here. But you want to throw your keywords in, in you know, a couple paragraphs here and there. And then your URLs, your permalinks are very important. Um, you know, instead of having, um, you know, taxattorney.com slash our products, you would want to have slash attorney.com slash tax services or something similar. So you want to be very specific with your pages. And you want all that content on that page to match, um, to match the keywords. And then with blogging, it's great because you have the categories and you have the tags as well, and those appear on, on each page or each post that you put up. So this is an example. This is Outspoken Media. If any of you are, this is a, a blog that I follow. If any of you are interested in social media and search engine optimization, it's What's pretty it called? Uh, Outspoken Media. Outspoken? Mm-hmm. So if any of you are interested in that, they have some pretty snarky writers, they're pretty funny. But this is where the, the title or the heading of the blog post right here, so this shows the title, and you can see that they put social media, that's a keyword, and they threw it in there. And then the meta tags, they're not displayed, but, um, but they're in there as well. And then there's the anger text, so you can see that these kind of pop out, so it's not just good for search engines, it's good for people reading it, if they're just skimming a website, that those hyperlinks pop out at people and they might be interested in that more than they are what's on this page, they might click through to that. And then the tags appear here, so just here are some of the more popular tags. Um, so you can see that they use, you know, these are the things that they're blogging about and they're tagging their posts, so blogging, branding, things like that come up here, and then their categories are here. So their categories aren't, you know, stuff I like or things to do. They're very specific. Online marketing, SEO, small business marketing, these kind of categories instead of, you know, very generic um, types of phrases. So just a word about keywords versus good content. You want to have um, content, because good content, because you need it impacts to impact its intended audience, which is people, <coughs> not search engines. And if you don't have the right keywords in the right places, the search engines aren't going to be able to, to display your website and people aren't going to be able to find it. So it's kind of like a double-edged thing. You have, to keep, you have to keep both things in mind whenever you're writing content. So, the first plugin that we're talking about, this is the all-in-one SEO pack. Anybody use this plugin? You do? Okay, awesome. It's a really, really, really um, easy way to put in your title tags and your meta description and your keywords. So, we'll put in, the, what will happen is once you install this plugin, and I'll talk a little bit about how to install plugins in a second, but once you install it, whenever you go to your page or your post, it'll be at the bottom of that page. And then you can just go in and you can put in your title. So you want to have your title tags, like I said, you want them to each be different for each page of your website. And you want them to be relevant to the content that's What's on your website. What? What was the plugin called? It's called All 
in one SEO tab. And I will have, I do have a copy of this. These slides are on my SlideShare um, account. So you can go to slideshare.net slash clicksim and you can find this presentation in there. And so I, I put all of the links on here as well so you can find all of this information. Okay, and so then uh, you can put in your meta description as well. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, search engines, they don't pay attention to this. Why do I want to bother with this stuff? But the truth is, is that your dis meta description shows up a lot of times in the search engine results. That's a little snippet that's displayed. They might pull from other content from your website, or they might pull that meta description, depending on what they feel like, I guess. Um, but it's always good to have it there, because that can be the determining factor as to whether somebody clicks on your website or not, whether you have that meta description there, and if it's something enticing and, and you know, is, is speaking to the person or what they're looking for. And then you can put your keywords down here as well. And, you know, search engines don't pay that much attention to the keywords anymore, but it's not like they don't pay. There is evidence that they pay somewhat attention to it, so why not just, you know, throw a few in there? Yes? You put keywords, you can put keyword phrases in there. Yeah, yeah. You can do phrases you or you phrases. can do keywords. Yeah. You separate by a comma? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes? Do you uh, personally copy for your title? The same as your post title and use that in this box, or do you add additional stuff to the title in the SEO path box? You know what I'm saying? So no, you give your you give your you give your post a title name in the beginning, like when you're creating oh, a post. Okay. So is that the same title that you're using down here for the SEO title? No, it's not. Okay. So just on my blog, I, I think it depends on how your theme is set up, and maybe Carmen can answer that better than I can. But the way that I have mine set up is that I put in a different title tag down here. My heading ends up being... <coughs> so what he's asking is, is do, am I putting in, for my heading, is that what appears as my title tag? By and default, it can yes. by default. By default yes. Okay, right. You're, you're putting in a custom. This is By default, uh, the description will be the uh, first so many 160 paragraphs of your text. You could also change... Uh, a lot of these in the SEO plugin uh, admin page, but then this is also a way to override per post. So for most posts, you're not going to need to override, but you can if you want to. Yeah, I mean, if your heading is relevant to the content of your website, you know, but oftentimes it's not. Like oftentimes I'll make a blog post and it it's something catchy. It doesn't have any keywords in it, but it's a catchy phrase that I want people to click on. But I don't necessarily have to use that as my title tag. Okay. Uh, another <coughs> keyword plugin, SEO Smart Links. Does anyone use this? It's kind of a cool tool. I haven't played with it too much. I, I've but used it, but I'll give you <laughs> what you have to explain it. Oh, oh. Okay, oh really? Okay. Because I've used it a little bit. I haven't had any problems yet, but um, what it does is it automatically links your content to um, to other pages of your website. So it'll take like your keyword phrases and then interlink those within your website. And it gives you some options. You can control the keywords through, um, like you can say, oh, I don't want this keyword to ever link to anything. So you can put that in. And then it allows you to set up your no-follow attributes, and um, you can open links in the window. So, okay. So, what is the warning then? Um, you can, for example, you can set it so that the first time you use a keyword phrase in a post, it'll link it, but then subsequent times it won't. So, if you use a certain phrase many times, it won't link it every single time, which can be kind of annoying to users and look very spammy. Um, unfortunately, it will always link the first one. So, when I was using it, I found there were times when I wanted to. Uh, link an organization to its website, but not the first time I mentioned it in the post. I wanted to link in the second paragraph. Okay. And I couldn't go for it. I'd have to go and manually override that, which was annoying. So I just stopped using it. Okay. So it could work, could not work. I guess if you really don't care about your content. Yeah, it's, it's great for SEO, but when you're trying to write for people, sometimes um, you have to override the spamminess. Right. Can you talk about the no-follow attribute? Uh, 
Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's save that for after. We'll go through this and we'll talk about no follow. Um, Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. We'll have some time for a question and answer. I think Dana has a question too, so we'll do it in a little bit. Um, another plugin is uh, I don't use this one either, <laughs> but this guy Yoast he do, he does a lot of really cool stuff with Google Analytics, and um, he developed this plugin. So it makes it possible for you to integrate your your analytics with your WordPress. So, and you can easily connect your AdSense and your analytics accounts. And I've been meaning to install this for a while, but I haven't played around with it too much. But I thought it'd be useful. And yeah, it's like if you go to this link, there's like a little video there that tells you about it. Which one? Um, it's called Google Analytics for WordPress. Does any, how many of you have Google Analytics on your website? Does anyone not use Google Analytics? Right. Professional, we're looking at Omniture. Oh, okay. So you're using something else. Does anyone not use any analytics whatsoever? Okay. <laughs> okay. So Google Analytics is very pertinent. Like, there's just so much information that you can get out of it. This is just an example. I think this was a screenshot from last year from PodCamps traffic last year. Um, but you can tell so much, and all you need is, you know, you set up the account with Google Analytics, and then you just need this snippet of code, and then you can go into your account, and basically you can see any, you know, all the traffic that's coming into your website, whether it's coming from direct, directly people typing in your URL, whether it's coming from referring websites, whether the website's out there linking back to you and sending people to your traffic that way, and also what's coming in through search engines and the keywords that people are using to find your website. And also if you have AdWords set up, you can see, you can separate the non-paid from the paid on that as well. And there's there's all kinds of different like, plugins and things you can do with it as well. But even just using it, you know, for simple, trying to track your traffic over time, seeing if, you know, a marketing campaign that you did or a blog post that you wrote was driving traffic. It's really good for, for doing that. So, um, yeah, Google Analytics is good. Now, okay, just going to step back. Right. Does everyone know how to install? Like, I don't know. Okay, I'll just go over this quickly. So this is just some steps, and this may have changed. This is using WordPress 2.8.4. So this is an extension of um, WordPress software. So what you do, you just log into your account, and then there's a plugins button there. So you click on the plugins. You go in, you say click on add new, add a new plugin, and then search for plugin to install. So you can just use keywords, you know, just like you search in Google or something. So if you're looking for a particular plugin that does such and such, you can search for it there. Or you can just type in the name of the plugin. Has anyone been using WordPress for so long that you didn't even know you could do this? Because you, you used to have to FTP upload it, and this is such a nicer way of installing a new plugin. A lot of the instructions for plugins will still indicate. Still indicate, yeah, the old way. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like you get the, the readme and it says, put this in your blanky blank folder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I find it easier to just do It's a lot easier. Yeah. It's easier. and what they like to see and what 
what they don't like to see. And Google Webmaster Tools gives you a lot of insight on how the search engines are reading your, your site. And Bing and Yahoo also have equivalents. And some of this information, like you can see the links, like it's really helpful to see the links coming back into your website as well. As the keywords that they have you, you know, they just, they give you a lot of good information about how they, they are seeing your website. And it's really easy to install. If you already have a Google account, you just set up the webmaster tools. They give you a snippet of code and you put it you know, in, the, in the code of your website, in the footer somewhere. And so it's just really helpful and easy to do. So I recommend that all of you, except for the one person who <laughs> has done it, um, uh, put that, start looking at your webmaster tools. And then another kind of, it's kind of unrelated, but the Google SEO starter guide, is really helpful to, to know what Google wants you to do with SEO. So they're recognizing that you know, people can do certain things to their website so that they can read it better and they want to have more relevant results in their website. So you, they want you to do these different things. But also keep in mind this is Google telling you what to do as well. So they might not be um, completely honest or upfront about how they are looking at websites either. So, um, some of the things that Webmaster Tools um, will show you or, or the things that Google looks at. Um, Robots.txt files, anybody, you know what I mean when I say that? Okay, so, for, <coughs> I'm going to go through each of these and the different plugins that you can set up to handle these things. But the robots.txt file, it's a file that tells the robot, the search engines, what pages you want them to look at and what pages you don't want them to look at. So if you have archive files or you have templates, it makes it easy for them if you're just telling them, well, I don't want you to look at those pages, but all the other pages of my website are okay to look at. Because that saves them time in crawling your website. So they like it when you, when you set that up. And... WordPress, does WordPress automatically have that file? I think they automatically disallow like the templates and things like that. I'm not sure. I think so. But anyway, we'll talk about more about it in a second. And then the URL, the structure, permalink, sometimes that default is set up and you can change the settings of that. And then there's 301 redirects, the permanent redirects if you happen to change your URLs. And then there's the XML uh, sitemaps, um, being able to submit your sitemap to the search engine. So first one, the Meta Robot. So this is the plugin, and it's just called Meta Robots. So this allows you to show the search engines the pages you want them to see and hide. So it's a, a plugin, and you can go in and change the features. It complies with the Google Webmaster Tools and Yahoo Site Explorer. And it allows you to edit the HT access file in there as well. Now, this plugin has given me some trouble. Like, if you already have an HT access file, you may want to um, just be careful with this plugin, I guess. <laughs> um, and then here's the different features that you can, or the options that you have. So, so there's just a, a bunch of different options that you can include and people who are more technical than me can figure out what all those options mean. Uh, and then this is how it actually looks. So it has this user agent here and it says, okay, go ahead and crawl, you know, everything from this website, but disallow these folders. So it says, don't crawl all of, all of the things in those folders. Now... As for the permalinks, I'm not sure if WordPress 3 change how this works. I don't think so. Okay. So I think that their default has some like kind of weird string that's set up, and so it's not very SEO friendly, I guess. Yeah, by default they're just numbered. Yeah, they're just numbered, so they don't have your, you know, the keywords in the URLs and the pages. So it helps to... <coughs> Put in the keywords, 
Um, so instead of you know having this weird string that's not readable by search engines or human beings really, it helps to have a URL that's like dot com slash your post title or slash your product name. Yeah, you change this in the settings of your WordPress engine. Oh uh, yeah, and here, here's the settings. So you go into settings and then click on permalinks and you can change the way that it's set. So you can do a custom or I think what I have is set up is the month and name. So it tells the date of each of my posts, but then I can change. Um, it goes by my heading. Whatever my heading is, is the default and it pulls that into the URL. But you can change that if you go to your, directly to your page, there should be an option, I think depending on your theme, but there should always be an option that once you save a draft of your post or your page, you can edit the URL from there. And you can even do it before you save a draft. Yeah, once it auto-saves, it auto-saves. Auto oh, okay. Because I've tried doing it, like as soon as I type it out and it won't let me, but it's, yeah, once it auto-saves, okay. Okay, and just to show you that this stuff works, and I'm not like standing here full crap. Um, <laughs> the pay-per-click, if I go to Google and I type in PPC advertising, Pittsburgh pay-per-click advertising, my website comes up, and it comes up because I have you know PPC services is in my URL, but I also have pay-per-click advertising services in my title tag, and it has this meta description is down here. So this stuff does. It does work and it does help your website to rank higher. <coughs> that would be a note, right? Like, hire the internet marketing firm that comes up first. <laughs> they know what's going on. Well, sometimes, <laughs> but the internet marketing firms, like, I don't come up high for SEO picks, right? I think I'm like number 10 or something because I don't obsessively focus on that and then try to convince, like, I'm busy helping my clients, right? Like, I'm not, like, obsessed with my... So, it's not always, like, the best indicator of... <laughs> but they should be getting some traffic to their website. Um, so, redirection. Why would you... Does anybody use redirection or know, have an example of why you may want to redirect a page? Yeah, like, let's say you redesign a site. You take over a site for a client, and uh, you... You're moving it from a static website to WordPress, and your URLs are going to be different, but you want the history page to line up with your new WordPress history page, for example. So you just redirect the one page to the other. If you use a 301 redirect, which is a permanent redirect, it tells the search engines that this page is now permanently at this location. So any links that were coming into that page will now pass through to the new page. Right. And... Another reason you might want to is if after you get you know, through this session, you may decide that all of your URLs suck. <laughs> and they don't, they don't have any keywords in them. So you might want to go back and change and rethink maybe some of those structures. So you can use this plugin. And what you do is you put in the source URL here and then the target URL. So whatever page you want to redirect, you put in the source and then you put the new page in the target. And then... If you're only changing it in WordPress, though, like if you're just going and changing the, the, the header or the, the actual uh, permalink, WordPress will make that redirect for you. So this is if you're changing it from something, a previous site, you know, Maybe it was a static HTML site and it was history.html and you're moving it over to slash history because it's in WordPress and called PHP. You can redirect that.
for me to do birdlicious.com slash Facebook would redirect to. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that's a good example. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, or your Twitter page without having to, you know, tell people to type in slash something slash something slash whatever. Well, you can get a, right. yeah, you can ask like your own. I mean, if someone didn't take yeah. like facebook.com slash bluebird is me. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> no, I mean, you can do it that way. I don't know, I know people that do both, that use multiple methods, but that way, if they're giving out things, that it all starts with their domain name, and so that's what people remember more, so they're not thinking Facebook first, they're thinking their domain name, slash, okay. I can get to other things from there, but I'm going to start there. That makes sense. One thing I wanted to go back, but John said, you didn't, that WordPress will automatically change those links. That's true, WordPress will automatically change those links, but they're not going to go out and tell Google that they changed those links, and they're not going to go out and tell all the other links that are going back to that page that you changed that link. So well, no, will, WordPress will redirect those for you. Yeah. If you change your your permalink, WordPress will redirect it. But in yeah. a case like this, where you had an old page, I don't know if anyone can see the text down here, but the source URL was about us underscore clicks dot htm. That's a static HTML page. And then you recreated it using WordPress, and now you're redirecting it to just slash about. That's where you have to actually go and create those redirects yourself and use this plugin. Okay. Can I ask a question to see if I understand? Sure. Um, so my site used to be in multiple type. Right. Uh, <laughs> I thought, and I'm now on WordPress. Okay. I have all of these links that point to my old removable type site, which looks different, but I can't believe the pages right now because they're all, uh, yeah, I have links that are directed to those. So it's, a d it's a different domain name. It's the same domain name. It's the same domain okay. name, but the uh, the link structure in WordPress is it's different. different. Right, so you can do that. Make a list so of all of those this. pages, exactly, and then redirect them one by one. But if I had built them originally in WordPress, I could just change the URL and it would do it. Right. right. If, sh if she wanted to change about to say about clicks I am, you can just do that in WordPress. WordPress will create that redirect for you. You don't have to worry about it. Even for outbound or like inbound links from other places that right. we remember. That's just if you're changing one WordPress permalink to another WordPress permalink. Can I question something to this topic? Um, I created a website in the Joomla, mm -hmm. and then it kind of got corrupted or something happened to it, and now it, you know, this website in WordPress, mm -hmm. exactly the same name, it's, uh, should I use redirection because, uh, I don't know, Yeah. Do that too? Yeah. Huh? The, well, they, what they were saying, the link structure is probably not going to be the same, so if you're, unless the, the full URL from your Joomla site looks exactly the same as the mm -hmm. full URL.
every time a new post or page is updated, this plugin will automatically send your new sitemap to Google and Yahoo and Bing. And that just makes it easier for the search engine so they're not crawling, you know, they don't have to come back to your website and crawl your website. It's a pretty easy one to set up. You do it once and then just set it for good. There was an image here, but it disappeared. <laughs> Yeah, um, it is all on slideshare.net slash clicksim. So all the resources and the link is on there. And then my website also, I post um, on my blog. I have a lot of um, posts on AdWords and social media, but not a lot. I try to post once every two weeks. But anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, there's some tips on there. But it's just clicks internet marketing slash blog. And, okay, so these are some of the features for XML sitemaps. And then, so one other plugin I wanted to mention is the SEO friendly images. So, putting alt tag, but search engines can't read images. So, adding the alt tags and the title attributes to the images helps search engines and it helps people um, be able to read your website as well. And so, this is just an easy plugin that allows you to, to do that. So some of the takeaways for today, if you take anything away, is that your keywords matter, so do your keyword research, and content is king, but it doesn't do you much good if nobody um, can find it. And then, you know, search engine crawlers, they're not all that smart, they are robots, so you kind of have to make it easy for them to find your website. And use analytics, track your traffic with analytics. Use uh, Google Webmaster Tools to see what's going on with your website. And if there are any problems with your website, the Webmaster Tools will tell you that as well. And I put some resources on here as well if you're interested in SEO. The SEO book, SEO Moz are two really good uh, resources. If any of you, is anybody in the Pittsburgh SEO meetup group? Oh, you guys are? Okay. Just never make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a Pittsburgh SEO meetup group, and we're trying to meet monthly. Um, it doesn't always happen. Uh, but the, it's just on the meetup site, meetup.com, and you can search for Pittsburgh SEO group from there. So we, um, I think at the end, no, it's October 5th, we're having a speaker come in from... Nashville, and he is an AdWords expert, so he's going to talk, be talking about AdWords if any of you are interested in AdWords. Yes? Joe, so I saw it on your site, actually. Um, do you think that that would be a good session for people who are new to AdWords, or should you actually know some stuff before you get there? I, I think he was going to be talking about, I think he's going to kind of tailor it to what the audience is, is thinking. Um, there's only 20 spots available. I think there's 11. I think we have 11 people so far. And I talked to him about that because he wasn't sure, and I wasn't sure. Like we're just, we'll see what happens. But um, and if that's helpful. But I think that what he's going to be talking about the AdWord, the new features in AdWords. But I think that that'll be helpful to anyone who's new to AdWords as well, just being able to kind of figure out, well, this is something that I could use and will be useful. So I think it'll be, you know, helpful. And there will be, you know, other people that are using AdWords, so you could ask them questions. We'll have a Q&A, and it'll be like a networking thing as well. So. I want to say something real quick because we're out of time. Um, since there was a lot of interest on redirecting, make sure you're also using a 404 plugin. 404 is the error page when someone comes to a page on your site that doesn't exist. Uh, there are lots I use useful 404s, but there are a couple of different plugins that will do similar things, um, which will not only create a better 404 page, but will also send you an email alert when someone comes to a site on your on your page on your site that doesn't exist. And uh, that way you can find out what pages need to be redirected, because there might be some old page that you haven't thought about, but someone's still linking to it, and you don't even realize that until you get the, the error message. Yeah, good point. And then did you want to quickly go over Yeah, 
they have real nice office set up there. So. I live right across the street. I should have no excuse. Oh, uh, that's right. Really really <laughs> okay. Um, and then these are some other WordPress um, specific resources as well. So, nofollow. Um, so <laughs> the nofollow attribute, what it basically tells the search engines is don't give this. So if you are placing a link on your website to another website, it tells the search engines, don't follow this link. It doesn't matter. We don't want to give them any link juice. We don't want them to have any relevancy. It, you know. So um, it is up for debate, and a like, high debate, I think, as to whether it has any impact on whether um, it actually takes link juice away from your website. I don't worry about it too much with you know linking to other people's websites unless like I'm talking about somebody I don't like and I'm using their website as an example. Then I'll use the nofollow. Um, but there are you know some. So it's a way to be vindictive. Yeah, exactly. Nofollow equals vindictive. Um, and also, the p people say, oh, well, you can do it on your own website, so you can place more relevancy to some pages on your website and not to others, called link sculpting, and I don't think that that works, so. <laughs> um, did you have any comments on it, or? Well, I didn't, I didn't understand why sometimes you would want it, except there are times that I've written about some, you know, ultra-right wing group, and I really don't want to give them. Yeah. So, then so, you wouldn't use so that makes perfect problem. sense, but I thought there was a reason why you didn't want to in, within your site. I thought there, I thought I'd read somewhere that it was there. It was better for you not to, to, to for you to use no follow, and that didn't make sense to me. So yeah, there's it's, there's a lot of chatter coming from both directions with regards to that. But I don't really myself personally. I don't pay that much attention to it. Like I'll just link to whoever I want to link to.